My mother was born in the uh, area of uh, Kiev, and they were crying. She came into the United States, 1880. My brother and sister were born in uh, New York. My mother moved to Harf, Connecticut. I was born in Harf, Connecticut. April 26, 1916. At the age of eight, I was in the hospital for an appendix operation. After the operation, I was able to walk around the hospital. An elderly patient showed me how to draw Uncle Sam, Cowboys and Indians. That was the start. Uh, before working for uh, the comics, I went to the National Academy of Design Art School. I did the uh, cosmetic drawing for bracelets, uh, planning designs. I didn't care too much. That was my first job. I, well, I don't know if you can call it art or what, but uh, it was not my thing. I went to school to learn the painting or change the color colors and all that because I, my biggest desire was to become an illustrator. Then there were a lot of illustration artists. Argosy, uh, Sardine Post, American Magazine then. But uh, when I got into comics, I was just about the same thing. It was illustration. But later on, the, the illustrators have disappeared because the, the magazines have gone away and uh, it was something different. You went to school with Jack Kirby? First time I met Jack Kirby was in an art school downtown in Manhattan. And uh, he did comical pencils, which is uh, fast. And I, I enjoyed watching him doing it. We had lunch together, we were sort of... He was from Brooklyn. I lived up in the... Uh, up, uptown, beside 200th Street. The first job in comics was with Eisner and Iger professionally. I got through with a professional agency. Uh, the Iger uh, called for me for samples. He didn't explain what kind of samples, but I did made individual cartoons. And I showed it to him, and he said that that is not the thing we do. I asked him what it is. He showed me a comic book. This is what it is. I said, give me a chance. I said, sure. Uh, I went home and I came back with a page of the following day, just about following day. I came back with a page, completed story, all lettering and everything, borders. I liked it very much. It was a story about a mountain place camps and somebody, a criminal. And they bought it for five dollars. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to work in the office. I said, I'll, I'll be fine. And they showed me it was four fellows. Then, it was Bob Powell, Lou Fine, and uh, Jerry Iger and Will Eisner. That's the start. But later on, as time went by, they, we moved from 42nd Street to 44th Street. And it, it expanded with more artists and cartoonists. I was together mostly with Eisner. We were both talking about stories. And Will Eisner, he had a lot of imagination, what he was doing. I could say one thing, that he was a producer, director, and, a, and an actor on, on paper. There was uh, that much writing for artists then, and uh, we got, I got along with Eisner. He told me about this guy, should hit this guy, and throw a bomb at this guy. I said, fine, I can do that. I wrote all, all the story down, and I drew the complete everything, background, and all that. The pages were tremendous compared to this today. I was looking forward a lot to it. But uh, mostly of all, is Eisner was the one that really helped with uh, my work. Did he do layouts? It was a complete uh, layouts, inking and drawing. You write the lettering in, but I don't do the lettering in uh, uh, ink. I complete the border, I make your own borders, and how many panels to page. I write the story first, and I, from there I uh, for one panel, two panels, three panels, four panels. I would uh, follow all that up and put it in the paper. And when I come to Wise and I show it to him, well, he would say, this is, uh, this could be changed a little, or that could be changed, but this is good. So I, it helped a lot. I mean, it brought my interest more. I brought it back, I took, picked it over, and I did it. I felt good about that. Did you see them outside of the office? Well, there was no other artists I knew, just the ones that were already in the office. But later on, I got to be more and more and more but from different office to another. I was quitting this and working for that and for a while, and I quit and go on to another office. The more I did that, the more I got to know more artists that way. They didn't get to know me. 
Where did you go after the Eisner show? Eisner, after Eisner, I quit Eisner because Igor had about 10 artists. Lot, each one has about five, six stories to do a month. Pages were not much per story, about five, six, or something like seven, compared to like, Somebody drops off, an artist drops out. I can't get another artist to replace him. So he takes his work and the distributor to other artists. And that makes it more work for them to pick up in one month. So they got to be, it kept on going like another artist drops out and it still gets distributed. That was one point. He came up to me, hurry up with the deadline. He said, you could take some home and work there. A little too much for me. One day we, we all went out to lunch and I told him I have to say something. I never returned back to Eisner and Agar. So I got along very well with Eisner. And from there, I haven't done anything for two weeks. I just loafed around. I went into a cafeteria on 23rd Street between the 6th and 7th Avenue. I met two fellows that I worked with Iger and Eisner, Charlie Salton another fellow day, Dave Glazer. And uh, we were glad to see each other, being that we worked together at uh, Iger and Iger. And he asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm not doing anything. He said, we quit a week after you did. He said, it was getting too much for all of us. And he says, across the street, there's Harry H. Chester, he's got a studio. I called him and he says, he needs an artist. How about you coming up and put this me? I said, fine, up there. I went up, it was on the fourth floor. He introduced me to Chester and Started to work for Chester at the studio. I was all right. I enjoyed working for Chester. It was close. There was no art director there or anything like that, but hey, uh, well, we had a nice group of artists there. Charlie Sultan, Al Plastino, Dory Cavallo, Louis Marrera. Louis Marrera was, he was into more fine art. He didn't care much for comics. He did Tarzan or something like that right up the wall. But the Chester, he was, uh, was more or less like a father. Al Plastino and I, Al Plastino was doing the Superman newspaper then. And we had a twist place in uh, Sucker Island, New Jersey. Uh, we had a ball. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good get, get together. How long did you work for him? About five years or so. Up there, Will Eisner separated from Argo somehow. I don't know how or what, but he had a studio in Tudor City, 42nd Street. He wanted me to work with Uncle Sam and other things, and he was doing the spirit. And once in a while, I would help him with the spirit. Got along together with Isaac again, all of that stuff. It was just, it was kind of homey, it was nice. And how long did you do that? Two years or so. What year? 43, 42, I think. Before Eisner went into the service? I was working in a fiction house. And also the same artists were there, here and there, on and off. I was drafted. At the Army, I was Fort Jackson, South Carolina. 100 Division, it's artillery, all artillery. They noticed my condition. I had a slight loss of hearing. They asked me to work in headquarters. All guns go this but that way. And they asked me to, out of this small man, it was for me to make large plan. So the officer can show to the other officers in the classroom how the bullet goes and it drops behind a mountain where the enemy is hiding and so forth. It was good. I enjoyed it very much. But uh, I felt a little guilty with all those other fellows passing by after a long one day hike or dead tired. <laughs> Here, I'm driving with a Jeep. <laughs> I felt rather, rather, real lousy about that. And then he released me. And uh, I went back to Fiction House. Fiction House wasn't the same anymore. The fellows, they were not around. Most they were girls and older men. I just, uh, we used to kid around a lot, you know. It was, all conversation, not, but uh, it was different. So I just uh, asked them, I want to work freelance. So you went back to Fiction House, and it wasn't as much fun. Uh, I just didn't feel right, and I asked if I could work uh, freelance. I said it was fine. And it, took, it was a funny thing about working at home with nobody around there, because you had to get used to it. It took about a month or so. But somehow, working freelance, I mean, it had more privacy. You know, all the references all around me, and uh, I was sort of contented by that. And I was thinking, making more pages a day, drawing out as much work as I can. So you like working freelance? Yes. If I ever went back to the office, I think it would take me about two months to get used to it. I mean, <laughs> but freelance, I enjoy very much. What uh, kinds of stories did you do at Fiction House? Well, there was Shana, 
secret agents or something like that. I don't recall too much. I was distributed one back here or there. And I can't think of any of them. When you finished the job, did you go into the office or did you go to pick it up or did you not go into the office at all? I did return. My work was completed. And uh, they would give me another script. And uh, I would go to Florida uh, <laughs> and come back and, or mail it back. Uh, but still, I was kind of empty with the fellows, not around. You know. So what did you do after you left Fiction House? Where did you go? What, what, what other features did you do? They were standard, standard publication, Stanley. I called the Time League, the Empire State Building. Uh, and then hired me, but I kept working for him. So when comic uh, business got slack, somebody told me about Scorcher Smith, the Associated Press. I went up there and they didn't like the person that was doing it. And they showed him samples, they, I was accepted. They asked me if I wanted those two, I said, great. Work there, uh, I'm freelancing also, you know, and bringing that into the city every now and then. They got about there three or four years. Somebody called up from Chicago. He says, I have, I'm from the National Newspaper Syndicate. I don't know what, what it was. I said, we have here Buck Rogers. Uh, I said, Buck Rogers is more popular than uh, Scorchy Smith. I said, I don't know, because I know the fellow that's doing that. I don't like to take it uh, out of his hands, you know. So he says, I'll tell you what, call you in a week later, you let me know. Otherwise, I might give it to somebody else. Uh, I was in between, so I accepted it. And I worked there for quite a while for them. But I was doing all the small things for them also, and, uh, like uh, golf instruction, things like that. Big missing thing and Buck Rogers when I was doing it was Velma. She wasn't there. Velma has always been with Buck. But uh, somehow, I don't know, but I, I think a hero's got to have a girl. <laughs> Sometime later, I was called that they got the discotinner Buck. Some reason, I don't know. I didn't bother to ask because it was, it was pretty rough with the schedule. I called Stan, Stanley Marvel. Come on over. I first moment was Captain America. There's a difference when they're working comic books and the newspaper. The newspaper is, you know, not too much flashy stuff, you know, bomb and what they do, all that. But the comics is more action, more fighting, more panel after panel. After the, so long from the comic books, I uh, was kind of stale, so I would stand, then you come out of the office, though. That's not right. The guys go, bah! <laughs> <laughs> But it did um, bring up a lot. I mean, it was very interesting. I, I enjoyed it very much. With him, I got into the swing of it. I was doing quite a bit for him. Spider-Man, uh, Daredevil, Fantastic Four. I would keep getting stories of Iron Man. And I got to sort of get used to it. I got to like it. It became a series. When did you finish working at Marvel? When did you stop doing work for them? Around the early 70s, something like that. Although, I, sometimes I think I've had a mistake, I don't know. Uh, DC Comics told me if I wanted to do DC for newspaper. I didn't know too much of anyone there, but I know mostly in Marvel. I told Stan about that. I said, you can't do this to me. He, goes, <laughs> he, uh, he was upset. Look, I said, hey, let's think about it, uh, whatever it is. I'll, I'll tell him, I'll let you know, but I didn't. I accepted it, Superman, but I didn't enjoy it at all. I, the stories, uh, the anchor, uh, there was no art director there to tell anybody what to write. Uh, there's Vinny Coletti who was the art director, but he didn't bother. Anything I was going on for two cents. Then I decided not to do it anymore. That I would like to do their comic books, whatever they have. And after a while, I, I didn't do much, and I just stopped. Tell me the, your favorite thing about all the work that you've done. I would say Iron Man. Something about Iron Man. The way Stan explained it, it was solid. I enjoyed it. To tell you the truth, I really enjoyed working as a cartoonist.